Crepe merlots are in bloom, folks. Yes, they are. They're beautiful and they're gorgeous. Stunning. Yeah. Do you remember the first one that you ever saw? Um, it was probably Natchez. Oh, they're not. They're not yeah, that uh, that was a white, white. Yeah. Oh. Um, if you are going out shopping, old school, the hardiest hy- uh, oh, here I go. I'm selling hydrangeas. <laughs> the hardiest crepe myrtles were the ones that had the Indian sounding names, like Tuscarora. Tuscarora oh. is hardy. Natchez is hardy. Um, and that those there's been so many new introductions. Oh, like gosh. people are asking for dynamite, dynamite. Yeah. Um, but still, one. like Tonto is is a as a, a variety. And I don't know. I, it, it's you can't go wrong if you buy a um, and pretty much anywhere within our listening area. You're looking for something that is a zone seven or lower. There are dwarf varieties that only get to be about four foot tall. Believe yeah. it or not. But here's a question, Julio. Mm-hmm. Is a crepe myrtle a tree or a shrub? It can be both. Both? Yep. We've had, we have. Explain like we, we yourself, said, please. You just said we have one that is only four foot tall. Right. And then we have the tree form, which is uh, 15 to 20 foot tall or even 30 sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. I've got one that's pretty big. Yeah. I, I saw it. All right. Question two, uh-huh. a follow-up. Follow-up. <laughs> this is the <a> political season. <laughs> um, so following that up, all right, uh-huh. what other plant is similar to that form of a crepe myrtle? Is it a tree? Is it a shrub? Good question. Uh, Sam, do you have the... Uh, Oh, the, uh, the Jeopardy? clock, Jeopardy yeah, clock. Hang on, I can find it. Dun, yeah. Dun, right. dun, 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 dun. What? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Julio. Another, 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 so an, another, another plant, plant that that's, that's like a, tr- is it a tree or is it a shrub? Oh, you know what? Lilac. Is yeah, like you got it. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> Very good. Lilacs are just like that. It's like, yeah. you know, when they're small, they're, tr- they're, you know, they're more like a shrub, shrub yeah. a shrub and that they're a shrubby tree, but then they can get bigger. Yeah. Crepe myrtles are the same thing. You got to check the variety, like Julio said, and that it can grow big or it could yeah. stay small. Um, I'll tell you, the hardiness zone is key. It used to be that you couldn't grow crepe myrtles basically in a – we're in New Jersey, so we're going to use our state capital. You couldn't really grow crepe myrtles north of Trenton, but now – in our whole listening range, which encompasses New York City and Long Island and things like that, where they are growing in um, in that climate. Now, so, okay, I want to buy a crepe myrtle. And here's another wood question. If you were paying attention, in the previous segment, we talked about plants and, and hydrangeas that grow on their new, say it, Julio? Wood. And crepe myrtles grow on their new wood. wood. So here's a trick to have the most floriferous. Flor- wow. Uh, I can't say that again. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a nap. Um, so what you what that means is that the old growth from last year it doesn't bloom on. It has to send out new growth, and that new growth is where the bud sets. So here's a trick. You want to make sure that you're pruning your crepe myrtles in in basically late winter, early spring. So so it's another, you know, winter pruning, pruning task. Yeah. It just just like well, here we're gonna get people confused, but just <laughs> like um the hydrangea, the opposite hydrangea to the macrophylla, mm-hmm. you know, so yeah. so again, we'll leave that for another show. But crepe myrtles, you want to prune that's winter pruning, folks. And there's a lot of things that get winter pruned. Um, again, one of them. You're you're gonna, unlike some of the larger like trees, you're gonna remove suckers, twiggy growth, crossing branches. Oh, yeah, Here, sure. Here's why. So we're we're on we're on YouTube, and and please subscribe and give us a five star review. Mm-hmm. It makes Aaron so happy. <laughs> when branches cross, okay, and the wind blows, they act like a saw, rubbing. And they rub, and that and that ends yeah. up where it ends up scarring the bark, 
And that allows insects to get in there and everything else. And it hurts okay. the plant and it lacks vigor on the one that branch that it's damaged most. So you want to, on any pruning, this is roses, oh, any pruning any you pruning. do, you want to eliminate those crossed branches so that that damage doesn't occur. So uh, certainly you want to do that with your crepe myrtles. Um, let's see. Side branches to a height of four to five foot. Uh, you don't, I've seen, oh, I've seen butcher jobs oh, yeah. where they take them, they just clip, 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 clip. And then all of a sudden it looks like a, a bunch of twigs, twigs, not even twigs, they're like stumps, stumps that are all over the, the thing. You want to open it up yeah. and think of it like you want to reduce it by a third. Mm-hmm. So that way, if you've got a 20 foot, you know, plant, you can reduce it by a third. If you've got a three foot plant, you can reduce it by a third, which is a foot. So again, you, you, that will open it up and that will create more opportunities for blossoms about this time, but you've got to do it in like late winter. So we're talking about February or early March. Um, if you've got, uh, branches that are more than two inches thick, you want to cut those branches all the way back to where they meet the trunk or, or the it's at the crotch point um, is what that is called technically. And that uh, you don't want to just, you know, leave like a, a stub. No. You want to take it right back to the, to the trunk. All right, Julio. Here's a question. Aphids. Enjoy crepe myrtles, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but how do you know? How do you know if there's apel? You see the leaf curls. Leaf curls? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Sorry, he answered go really Sam. Fast. All right. He answered it pretty quick. Um, <laughs> what else do you see? Well, you see the honeydew. Honeydew. Yeah. It's I'll major, say it. It's uh, poop. Yeah, it is. I usually make Julio say it because I enjoy him feeling uncomfortable. Um, but yeah, so, so what happens is aphids, they have so many generations and they mass on plants that it's like a black soot. And a lot of people think, oh, I've got uh, sooty disease. I've got smut. <laughs> Do you believe smut is a I, 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 you know. Hey, smut. I've got smut. <laughs> you got smut? <laughs> and that smut is, is uh, like a disease that actually it, it occurs in vegetables and, right. and all types of things. But on this plant, you have the honeydew, which right. is coated. It's coating it in black, and it's not a disease. It's basically crap from the aphids, and it's so much. And then all of a sudden, it's like, no, the ants are causing it. No, the ants are growing up the, the tree to eat the honeydew, so it's not really, it's not the ants are the problem, it's the aphids. Aphids are pretty easy to get to get rid of. Um, it generally, they don't, they're not going to kill it, but they're going to make it look bad. Um, if you spray the foliage and you want to try to get top and bottom foliage with a simple, you, you, we have Spinosad here in the studio, and if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, uh, and that where you'll see that you can use that, you can use a eight, you can use pretty basic um, insecticides, organic, inorganic. You don't have to go crazy with it. It's not like a borer or something that you need to use something that is a, um, a systemic. But if you use a contact to control the aphids, it would, you know, that's that's all you need. But what did I say when we first started, right? Aphids, Julio, are come in mass. Yeah, they come. So you have, first of all, you have the adults. The adults are basically crapping and making everything a mess. The, then there's, they lay eggs. The eggs are there. Then the eggs hatch and there's juveniles. So you've got to get three generations, not just one. It's not a one and done. You're going to do three applications about seven to ten days apart. Then you will clean it up. Then it will be done. And that as the rain comes, it will wash off the soot off of the leaves. And if you have patio furniture underneath or anything like that, you're going to have to power wash that off. Um, But again, it will control. But three applications, three applications, seven to ten days apart. Um, Spinosad to me is organic, safe. 
And uh, we're going to talk more about that in an upcoming segment. So stay tuned. What about diseases, Julio? Yeah, powdery mildew is one of them. Powdery mildew. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's funny, we we mentioned about lilacs. Yeah, lilacs. lilacs and yeah, it, it they is. both can get powdery mildew. Um, usually it's on the older sections of crepe myrtles, but the disease, it, it can get severe to where it'll defoliate half of its leaves. And basically when a plant gets powdery mildew, it's say, I'm not getting any sunlight. I can't produce food through photosynthesis if I don't have light. So let's get rid of those, you know, leaves and it all of a sudden starts dropping Drop leaves and that that's the problem with, with powdery mildew. And that you want to spray it the, with the first signs of that. And, and a, a good spray to use uh, is the Fertilome. It, it's F-Stop, okay? And it is a great uh, disease control for all types of landscape plants, even indoor plants for that matter. Um, it works really well. But again, you want to try to catch it early. And you can tell because it looks like somebody coated the the um, the leaves with a little bit of baby powder, <laughs> and it doesn't wipe off real easily. And that you need to start spraying it um, the first sign of it, and that way you'll control it quickly. If you wait, it's just going to get worse and worse. And it has to do with humidity. It has to do with a lot of times when we get in these wet and dry periods, oh, yeah. that both the wet period. <laughs> The wet period uh, will uh, cause it, but the dry will as well. Um, Aaron, I'm sorry. I'm distracted. Uh, can you get a close-up on our, our eating? Can you see that? Now we we brought in we brought in parsley and those again on, you watch on YouTube we have parsley in and we have a swallowtail uh, caterpillar we've got it on screen now so it's on screen now yep. it's eating and as I'm doing the segment I'm watching it and it's <laughs> it's starting to eat before yeah. it was just like City. you know you brought me from Washington Township to, to Philadelphia I'm not sure I want to be here I think it's happy to be here because it's eating um, that uh, we listen to the segment coming up on. On herbs, we have uh, a, a nice surprise with a swallowtail butterfly ca caterpillar. Um, in any case, that that is coming up. Um, anything to add about crepe myrtles? No, it, you know if you have the tree. Wow! Well, <laughs> All if you right, have the tree form, thanks, Julio. <laughs> Glad you came. <laughs> if you have a tree form, you you know you need to get up high on it. So you be careful as you're doing the you know. Well, the 15, use 20. a pole saw. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, yeah use a pole saw. Pole, saw. pole saws are easy. Yeah, you know, and they're they're not too expensive, and that you'll use it for other other plants. Okay, so, that's and a great the, idea. You know, and then that way you're, you're you're and again, this is something that you're doing not now, not in the fall. Right. You're doing it in the winter, mm -hmm. just before spring. Right, and that and that you're doing a lot of other plants like right. we've we've talked about it before. Mm -hmm. Paniculata hydrangeas. Mm -hmm. Is the one that escaped, and you're doing it on a regular basis. You're not skipping every year, any, yeah, every year, no, and you're controlling height. You're controlling the the basic. You're getting airflow, which in essence will control powdery mildew. Yeah, so again, it it has to do a lot about pruning. pruning. Yeah, and and think about this: every time when you go out there and it's February and you're cold and you're doing this, you'll be rewarded at in July with an abundance of flowers yes. on your crepe myrtle. 